Today I'm applying Dithiopia WSB and we're about to start right now. Hi everyone, Rob the Average Lawn Guy. Thanks for tuning in. So today I'm applying my second application of pre-emergence on my lawn. Now this video is meant for the more moderate to advanced users and I realize this video may not be meant for everyone. So if you're not comfortable applying Dithiopia 40 WSB, feel free to put down a granular app or even use Podiamine. I'll link on how to apply Podiamine 65 WDG in this video right here. Now Dithiopia 40 WSB comes in a water soluble bag and it's meant to be used all at once and meant to be spread out over a large area via a big rig. Now looking at the directions, the direction seems a little unclear because it's not really meant to be used on a small scale. Now before we decide to mix the dithiop here, it's important to note that you have to calibrate your backpack sprayer. I'll link a video right here on how to calibrate a backpack sprayer, but in short, you need to determine how many gallons of water or product is able to be dispersed over a thousand square foot area. Now when you're calibrating your sprayer, you don't want to do this. Stop that. You're walking too fast, you're providing large gaps in coverage, and your pre-emergent will be ineffective. What you want to do is slow it down. You want to get even coverage throughout the whole lawn. Very important. So in regards to what items you need, you're going to need the product itself, but you're also going to need a scale to measure out your product, and then you're going to need a scoop. You can get any kind of scoop something large enough from a protein drink for example or an iced tea drink you need a scoop on top of that you need a marking die i prefer a green marking die only because the lawn's going to look kind of funny having a blue tint to it so green will actually look much better lastly you're going to need proper ppe besides the boots long pants and long shirt you're also going to need a mask i prefer to use an n95 mask this mask I've been using for about four years now is pretty filthy, but I'm still using it and it works. On top of that, I would recommend you wear some type of eye protection. You don't have to go crazy with the eye protection, a simple sunglasses will do. Now keep in mind, the Dithi pair is not meant to be open. The substance itself is pretty fine and it's almost like a baby powder like substance where any kind of wind that blows or if you toss it in the air, it's just going to spread out and that poses an inhalation risk, which is the reason why I wear a mask. Now, one of the ways you can give it is just basically go at the max level, which is 0.46 ounces per thousand square foot, but I like to calculate it based on my exact grass type. So before we go on, you need to turn to page five where it lists the program type, whether it's program one, two, or three. You need to determine which program you fall under. For most of us, we're going to fall under program one, and I'll read it out loud. Program one can be used for pre-emergence control at sites where turf grass is cut relatively high, such as homeowner lawns, and will provide a three to five months of pre-emergence crabgrass control. So most of us will fall under program one. And for those people who fall outside of program one, and those are very few and far in between, you're going to fall either under program two or three. Program 2 is for pre-emergence control at sites where turf grass is cut relatively low, such as golf courses, and when turf grass is maintained or weed control has been conducted during the previous year. Program 3 is for pre-emergence control at sites where turf grass is cut relatively low, such as golf courses, and when turf maintenance or weed control has not been conducted during the previous year. So the difference between program two and program three is basically if you provide some type of weed control the previous year or not. Like I said before, most of us are gonna fall under program one, but then you have program two and three to fall back on if you don't fall under program one. Next, you're gonna scroll down, still on page five, where you're gonna look at programs for crabgrass control. You're gonna look over on the left side where it says region. You first need to determine which region you're in and then you're gonna move over to the application rates. Now the application rates can get a little tricky there, but I assure you it's not. It's important to look at line three of the application rates in each region, pounds per acre. But before we get any further into the pounds per acre, you first need to know the conversion rates. 
you need to know how many square foot is in one acre. Well, we know one acre equals 43,560 square foot. And then you have to know how to convert pounds to ounces. That conversion factor is times 16. So we look at the pounds per acre in line one. It asks you to apply 0.47 pounds per acre. You have to convert 0.47 pounds into ounces. And to do that, you take the 0.47 pounds, multiply by 16. That's going to give you 7.52 ounces. Next, you're going to take your 7.52, divide it into 43.56, which is the amount of square foot, and that's going to give you your application rate, 0.173. You can round up if you like to 0.18, doesn't matter. We go down to the next region, which is the transitional states. The product asks you to apply 0.625 pounds per acre. To convert that, you have to take the 0.625, multiply it by 16 to get 10 ounces. Then you take your 10 ounces, divide it into 43.56. That's going to give you an application rate of 0.23 ounces per thousand square foot. We're going to scroll down and skip the south and go to the coastal south. The product costs for 0.625 pounds per acre in a split application. You take your 0.625, multiply it by 16, and that's going to give you 10 ounces. You take your 10, divide it into 43.56, that will give you an application rate of 0.23. But the difference with Coastal South is that it's asking you to apply in a split application five to ten weeks apart so on one app you're going to put 0.23 ounces per thousand square foot and then five to ten weeks later you're going to make another application of 0.23 ounces per thousand square foot now for this demo today i'm in the south and the product calls for 0.95 pounds per acre i'm going to convert the 0.95 multiply by 16 to get 15.2 ounces I'm going to take the 15.2 ounces, divide it into the total square footage of an acre, which is 43.56. That will give me an application rate of 0.35. And there you have it, guys. That's how you convert what you need to use for your application rate and for your situation. Now, there's a line I want you to pay particular attention to. If you scroll down to page 6, under maximum use rates do not apply more than 0.46 ounces per thousand square foot per application and or do not apply more than 1.38 ounces per thousand square foot per calendar year you don't want to go over this you have an application limit and you have a yearly limit you want to pay close attention to that next for people in New York you don't want to go over 0.23 ounces per thousand square foot per year. So follow the rules in regards to that. Now since I calibrated my backpack sprayer, I know my sprayer gives out about 2 gallons per thousand square foot. If you find you're doing your calibration and it's taking you a long time to actually calibrate, let's say 6 minutes, there's a way to go around that. You can change out your nozzle types in this picture right here and switch out the default red fan tip nozzle and go purchase another nozzle from a website called Sprayer Depot. You have a list of options on which types of Jet T nozzles you can use but I chose the one that has a higher output preferably one gallon per minute. So this effectively cuts my time to apply this. Instead of six minutes I'm able to apply over 2,000 square foot in about three to four minutes. Now the first thing you want to do, you want to put your mask on. No exceptions. You need to be safe doing this. You need to prevent yourself from inhaling this once you open the bag. You fill up your backpack sprayer, fill it up about three-fourths of the way, and then take your scoop and put it on a scale. You want to zero the scale out with the weight of the scoop. You want to eliminate the weight of the scoop. Next, you take your scoop, take out the exact product you need. In my case, I need 0.35 
ounces of the product. So I'm going to take the 0.35, mix it in, and I'm going to take another dose of 0.35. Because remember, my backpack sprayer puts out two gallons over a thousand square foot, and I have a four gallon sprayer. So I'm able to put out four gallons over 2,000 square foot. And the product calls for per thousand square foot. So I need 0.35 ounces per thousand square foot of the product. So you put your product in, then you put your green dye in. Next, you wanna fill your product to the top. And then you move about, start at the very edge of the lawn where you're not gonna walk over it and spray gradually. Take your time doing this. Make sure you're not walking too fast. And the green dye is helpful in providing that visual cue to know not to over apply or if you're under applying. Once you finish, I have to stop, rinse and repeat. Again, I'm going to fill up my backpack sprayer three-fourths of the way. Next, I'm going to zero out the scale with the scoop on it. Take out my product, which is 0.35 ounces per thousand square foot. After that, add my green dye and then fill up the backpack sprayer the rest of the way. Rinse and repeat. And remember, after you apply this, it needs to be watered in. Whether you want to rely on the mother nature giving you a light rain, or you want to water it in yourself, but make sure you water it in lightly. Don't rely on a huge thunderstorm pouring rain to water this in for you. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a like. And be sure to watch these videos right here for more tips on lawn care. With that, thanks for watching. Take care.